So this is going to be a quick video on how to open an image and create regions of interest um, using the Hyperspectral Pi software. So if you want to install it, pip install Hyperspectral Pi right here. There's a GitHub page for it and YouTube videos with more tutorials. So we're doing kind of quick intro, getting started, but the uh, GitHub page has PDF guide and um, a bunch of data. So this is a Cuprite image and then a bunch of USGS spectral libraries. Um, and, okay, so do pip install. Um, and then just do import hyperspectral pi and it will um, run run code with hyperspectral pi in it and what you will get is a GUI like this and so what I'm going to do is open the image so I go to my hyperspectral pi folder and I get my data and I want to open up this USGS image and you could um, Let's see. If you want just the data, you can go to the GitHub, down it directly from this folder. All right, if you want to put the, the data somewhere separate from the Hyperspectral Pi installation. Oh, also, the spectral libraries we're going to work with were collected by the USGS, and so this is kind of the, their page on it, and you can get some information, more information on their page. Here's like individual spectra, and so you can go through and get description of the spectra, chemical formulas, um, etc. Oh, and we're going to look at a hyperspectral image over Cuprite, Nevada. If you want a uh, hyperspectral image that covers more area, a little higher resolution, you can download here from the Everest over Cuprite. Um, page. Let's see if we click there. Here's the the higher resolution one you can download. That's of course a you know just a single band of it. Okay, so let's get into the processing here. So we can use the plus to zoom in. I have a mouse. You can use your mouse wheel to zoom in. Right now, you can click and drag. And what we're going to do is we're going to look for today, we're going to look at those cuprite, um, the alanite mounds down here. And, right, so we can pick any bands down here if I want to flip through a band and select something that gives me some contrast. You can select different bands through here. And this image is only the uh, 2000 through 2500 wavelength range. Okay, so this gives me a little bit of contrast around the areas that I that I care about. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom in on the area that I'm interested in. All right, so it's this area, and I'm going to click the collect ROIs. And call this first OI Alanite Hill 1. So I can click. And depending on what I want, um, I could zoom in further if we want. Oop, I started to write a second Alanite Hill. And this first region of interest is only going to be over this first Alanite Hill. Okay, so that's Alanite Hill 1. I'm going to make a new ROI. And Alanite Hill 2. All right, and so now I have two... Um, Alanite Hill 2 two regions of interest over two alanite hills and I actually off the top of my head don't know anything else in particular here so but I could make you know, regions of interest over whatever I want and here I'm going to click save the ROIs and it's going to save them as a CSV and maybe I'll save them in the same location as my uh, 
data alanite hills ROIs. And now if I go into my folder and I go and I look into the data, right, there's a CSV and I can open that up and each row is a pixel spectrum. Here are the wavelengths. This gives me the X and Y coordinates. This is the color that was associated with the region of interest I created. And this is the name. So you can use this to, to load into Python doing read CSV or whatever code you prefer. And then do work on those pixels. Now, if we want to, we can add another ROI and I hit, if I hit escape it stops drawing so I'm going to pick my new ROI so I'll click my new ROI here and I'll just call it other and I can draw an ROI over something else if I want and then if I want to I'll just call this one ROIs. After I'm done, I can do machine learning classification. I can art open those ROIs. So I can open those ROIs. I can select a bunch of classification metrics, run my analysis. Oh, I have to click here to highlight. And shows me when you discriminant analysis shows me how well I can distinguish those. Classification accuracy is one between LDA, QDA, and random forest. They all work um, perfectly. So this tells me that these two alanite hills, there's something different going on between them, even though they're both alanite. So. Um, that's about all we're going to get into today. Um, I guess one more thing, if I want to take a look at that spectral library. All right, so here's my three different classes. My red is my... Oh, sorry. I opened... I didn't open the Alanite um, regions of interest. I grabbed another one with grass, gravel, and trees, um, which makes a little more sense on why you classify them at 100%. If I want to open up the spectral libraries, I go to spectral library link manager. I could open up the library. Again, go into hyperspectral pi. Oh, is this, is this what you, which you have required? Go to my data. Here's the USGS minerals library. And then I can click on these to plot them, to take a look at them. If I want to look at a different library from the USGS folder, this is the spectral library from USGS, so I could open up that one, and that has some other spectra in it. Okay, thanks for watching.